Hi and welcome back to the channel, I'm Marcus from Intersect Governance and in today's video we're going to discuss cybersecurity, risk, governance and compliance, otherwise known as GRC. Now all, before you all start moaning, complaining and leaving the video, uh, this video is hopefully going to explain a few things about how to keep your business secure, reduce the risk within the business and make your information security program a bit more robust if you haven't already got one. Now, GS, the GRC uh, topic can be massive and today we're only going to touch the sides of it, so if you want to know a bit more about it, feel free to drop a comment below the video, let us know that you want to know a bit more about it, and then we can actually make a couple more videos about it and just expand upon the topic, you know, whether or not it's governance, if it's risk, if it's compliance, if it's cybersecurity, anything like that, you know, just drop a note in and we'll go from there. So, let's get on to it. Now, getting into GRC and cybersecurity within the business, if you didn't already know, both topics pretty much go hand in hand together with each other. Uh, it makes a nice mature information security program. If you didn't already have one, it can help you work towards building one up and going from there and moving on. But what exactly is cybersecurity and GRC? Well, cybersecurity is a term that's primarily used to define the protection of smart based devices in your mobile uh, phones, devices, tablets, computers, pretty much anything that's online. Um, cybersecurity in itself can be a massive topic and yeah we won't really be touching on that but it's pretty much going against anything that is online is the security of the cyber <laughs> pretty much now cyber security is a vast topic however it's all about ensuring that the unauth is protecting against unauthorized access to any type of information within your business whether it's personal information it's um ip information anything like that so there's a few steps that we can do for businesses to ensure that um, everything's put in place to protect it. One of them is firewalls, ensuring that your firewalls are in place, turned on both at the border where the internet is and on each device within the, the company. So on your computers, on your smart devices, anything like that. If it's got support for firewalls, stick it on. The next one is a good debate, firewalls. Um, once that's done, you've got antivirus or anti-malware. This has a massive debate. Some people say, yeah, put antivirus, anti-malware on. Some people say, don't use it, you don't need it. My personal experience is, put it on. If you've got it, put it on. You know, it's better than nothing. Even with uh, Windows Defender these days and Windows 10, you know, it will protect you against stuff. And if you do get infected, if you do get a breach inside your network, it can actually reduce the lateral movement between um, attacks and stuff like that. So it'll actually make it harder for anyone who actually gets into your environment. Um, another one you could do as well is keeping your computers and systems up to date, ensuring that firmware is installed, um, everything's patched up to date, your operating systems are up to date, your mobile operating systems are up to date, third party apps are up to date. Just make sure everything's kept up to date and make it nice and easy for you. And then obviously depending upon what your business is, you know, you might even look at penetration testing or anything like that as well. Now this hasn't covered all aspects of cybersecurity because as I said, it's absolutely massive, but it gives you a little bit of a view of you know, how to protect your business moving on from there. So with that done, let's move on to GSC and let's talk about it and find out what actually it is, what's it made up of and going from there. Now GSC, uh, which is pretty much governance, risk and compliance, uh, refers to a strategy which is pretty much used within businesses for managing business overall risk management and compliance uh, against various regulations which need to be, be performed or adhered to. You know, if you're in, um, healthcare, if you're in legal, if you're in finance, stuff like that, you have to adhere to various regulations. GRC helps that your business comply with that and move forward. Now, your business doesn't have to be in these areas to comply with GRC, but you know it, it fits every business, but obviously it depends upon the size of the business, depends upon the size or the complexity of your GRC program. But hopefully this video will give you some food for thought, work through it, understand what it is and how you can tailor it for your own business itself. Now, GRC is a sort of standardized approach for helping businesses design and align their IT and business objectives, thereby effectively uh, managing your risk and helping you to uh, meet those necessary compliant requirements if you've got them. Now, GRC forms a framework or can form a framework within the business, uh, such as standards like ISO 27001, 9001 and things like that. But GRC pretty much ensures that the processes are in place within your business and that you've got your processes, your policies, your standards and everything put in place that everyone follows and adheres to and works from there and you've got that underlying framework that just hopefully bonds and makes the business work. 
Now, by, implementing, imp this bit words out, by now implementing GRC within the business, uh, it can help your business identify and reduce the risk within the business. It can help to control the effectiveness of your security and the compliance, and it also helps you to remove those siloed departments by bringing in a team of, pe team of people who can actually work around within the business, identify all those risks within the business, um, look at adhering to all the policies, the procedures, and things like that, and actually working throughout the business itself. You know, you no longer have to have those siloed businesses or departments uh, that everyone just looks after. For example, um, your QA environment might only have certain dedicated people who work in QA. You might have your development team that only look after their own side. You might have HR that only look after them. If you've got a, a nice GRC framework put in place and you've got those dedicated people that actually work for it, they have overall visibility within the entire business and they can go around and actually talk to the whole business and there's no actual like isolation between department to department. They have they kind of like sit right at the top of the business and then actually look over it, look down, and work with all the other teams within the business. Okay. Now that we have a I guess a brief understanding of what GRC is, it's time to actually break down what GRC is, what the components are, and go through the following sections and we'll just discuss what governance is, risk is, compliance is, and how they all work for your business and how it all I guess gels and forms GRC. So first component of GRC is governance. Governance defines the way that your business is managed and controlled with, within the environment. Within GRC terms, it's, it's a way that allows the business to set its direction. Now this is usually based upon implementing strategies, policies, procedures within the business and ad adhering to like a standardized framework. The governance is designed and signed off by someone more senior within the business because without the OKF or the CSO the senior management then if any issues occur within the business the people managing that compliance or the risk of the business itself will have no backing. So if there's any issues, any incidents or anything like that, if you don't have the CSO from the senior management then nothing's going to be done and then you haven't got the, the backing and the CSO of saying look we need to do this, we need to manage this risk, we need to meet these compliances you know, if, if you don't have that, then there's there's no system in place there for you. So as part of the GRC and getting the governance sorted, you know, make sure you've got the senior management on board, you've got the board level or anyone like that on board like that moving forward. Now, additionally, without having the governance part of the framework in place, there's no certainly control there to measure your risk and compliance within the business. And therefore, it feels like, well, like I've just mentioned, everything kind of all just falls apart if there's no bonding or there's no membership like that. Now moving on to risk, uh, risk can be identified as anything that could cause harm or loss to your business. A good example of risk is um, this pandemic. You know, how many people didn't actually identify that you know, there might be a pandemic in the next couple of years? You know, everyone was pretty much taken by surprise the way COVID hit and everyone's just had to adapt and move forward straight away. You know, everyone's pretty much working from home now or they were or they're going to be. You know, so how does that risk affect your business? You know, did you work for it? Did you plan for it? Did you have supplies in place for it? Could everyone um, VPN into the machines, into the office? You know, did everyone have laptops? Could they actually work from home? Was everything in the cloud? Was everything just locally installed on the machines in the business? And then they've had to adapt, run around, rush and, and get that sorted. So those are kind of the areas of the risks you've got to look at. Although it doesn't have to end at that. You know, you could look at your supply chain just um, this week alone, you know, looking at solar winds and stuff like that and all those incidents. And that was my phone. Apologies for that. So, yeah. Now, once you've identified your risks, you've got to keep them in, in store, um, keep them in an asset register and keep them up to date, continuously assess them and look at them. Now, we've discussed um, risks and uh, risk registers before. I'll stick a link into it up here somewhere and then you can have a look at that if you don't know what it is. But by identifying your risks, no matter how small it is, you know, it'll improve your business moving forward. Now, in GRC terms, risk management ensures that your business identifies, analyzes, and coordinates any risks that have been found could cause harm or possibly derail the achievement of your overall objectives within the business that you've already defined. Now, with all that with risk, yes, it's a bit of a rant, but I will move on to compliance, which is next. <clears throat> now, now, compliance in GRC terms, and for the most part of businesses, is ensuring that your business follows and adheres to a strict um, set of guidelines that you've implemented or you've defined within your business. Now, this usually forms around your policies and your procedures that you've got within the business itself. 
Compliance ensures that you're achieving and implementing the measures and controls uh, that you've, you've set out for any requirements. Compliance is a kind of a living thing within the business. Like ISO 27001, you need to mark your own homework internally. So what you should be doing is performing internal orders regularly, or at least reviewing um, your risks, your business, your supply chain, um, what accreditations you need, what compliance you need. Do you have to sign up to third party services or anything like that? And, and go from there, especially with um, Brexit and stuff like that for the UK. There's a lot going on in the next coming couple of months with us leaving the EU. Have you defined you know, what compliance procedures you need to adhere to um, supplying people outside to, uh, into the EU or anything coming in from the EU to the UK? Have you identified all that? It's the same sort of thing. Now this might sound like a lot of work and a lot of ranting and in theory it can be at the start especially if you don't have any type of framework in place so you're not aware of ISO standards and things like that but once you actually start at it all you need to do is kind of piecemeal it out identify your risks identify what assets you have like um, paperwork assets computers things like that and then just identify those write them down look at them build them all up build a team that are going to look after this you know, it might. If you're a small person, it might just be one member team. If you're a larger company, you might have two, three, four people all working as part of a team, and also get the backing of the management and go from there. So now that we've covered all the boring stuff, why is GRC important in the business? Well, basically, it comes down to the streamlining organisation of the business. Yes, I've said business quite a lot in this video, but it helps you to implement the the framework and um, get the reassurance and get the standardisation of the business. You have everything covered, everything's running smoothly, you've identified all your risks, you're, you've identified that you're complying to all the compliances externally to the business as well as in the business, you're identifying that people are following your procedures, your policies, everyone knows what's going on. Now what you might be thinking is, how do I actually do this? How do I piece it out? Well, you can be proactive, you can plan, you can design your framework, piece it out work, build upon it, as I've said before, you know, look at the areas of the business, identify the risks within the business. You know, what can be resolved? What have you changed? Um, is there a change control program in place? If there's not, build one, you know, put it all out. So yes, we're going to put this change in. Who's going to be in charge of this? Who's going to build this? Who's going to do that? What are the risks? What happens if X, Y, and Z happens? How can I resolve this and go from there? But GRC is all about risks, identification, of management, um, auditing, having a look, checking everything out, make sure everything's fine and going from there. Yes, this video has been a lot of talking and yes, I'm aware that we haven't covered an awful lot of it because there's an awful lot to it. But if people are interested in this and want to know a bit more about it, put some comments in below the video. You know, we can break it out a lot more. We could have dedicated videos on the governance aspect, a lot more on the risk and a lot more on the compliance and just work into it a little bit more and delve into it a bit more maybe you know show a bit more documentation things like that and go from there so yeah i hope you like this video you know feel free to like the video or please like the video it helps us identify you know how many people actually like this uh, subscribe to the channel to help us um grow the channel and yeah find out a bit more information about what we're going to be pushing out in the coming uh, months we've got a lot of videos in the pipeline so hopefully this is going to help you um, understand and build the frameworks and that for your business and just help you secure your business in the future. Okay, thanks for now.